Welcome to our video on installing Slackware Linux. Slackware Linux is a popular distribution of a Linux operating system that is known for its simplicity and stability. In this video, we will walk you through the process of installing Slackware Linux on your computer. Before you begin the installation process, it's a good idea to ensure that your computer meets the minimum requirement for running Slackware. You can find this information on the official Slackware website. You will also need to download the Slackware installation media which is available in the form of an ISO image from the website. Once you have ISO image downloaded, you will need to create a bootable installation media. This can be done using tools like Rawfoss, Balena or burning the ISO image to the DVD or USB drive. Once you are in an installation environment, you will be guided through a series of steps to set up a Slackware on your computer. These steps include selecting your language, partitioning your hard drive, and configuring your network setting. Be sure to follow the prompts carefully and make any necessary changes. So at the first stage of the Slackware Linux installation, we are just prompt to choose out the keyboard map and it's by default set to US. I'm not just going to change it. I'm just going to hit the enter and let's continue. And here is the really very important information displayed on your console. So if you are trying to install the Slackware Linux for the first time, make sure you just read this documentation properly. So we need to create a, at least one partition type of Linux file system and another partition that is the swipe. And if you want to create the other partition like EFI, if your system does support the EFI, then you we have to create the partition for the EFI, EFI system also. So I have booted my Slackware Linux with the EFI system. So that's why I have to create the separate partition for this EFI also. Now let's just go ahead and log into the system. So the credentials will be, will be the root. And after we completed to create the partition, now we can simply run the setup command. Now let's check if the system is boot into the EFI or not. So let's do the ls slash sys slash EFI slash ls slash sys slash framework slash EFI slash parts. And as you can see that our system is booted into the EFI. Now we can begin to partitioning our dicks. So that will be the lsblk. And as you can see, I have the BGA. And let's do the cfdx slash step slash pda if you don't want to use the cfdx then you can also go with the ftx also so let me just continue with the cfdx and let's continue with the gpt partition and let's create the first partition that will be around 500 mb and let's specify the type and that will be the efi system for the bootloader to be installed and let's create the another partition for the swipe partition and that will be the 2g 2 gigs and let's specify the type and that will be linux swipe and let's create the another partition and that is the default one linux file system and we don't need to specify the type here and let's press on the right and let's quit from here and lsblk so as you can see we have created the three partition and let me do the mk swipe slash step slash pda to and this is our swipe partition and let's do the swipe swipe on slash step slash pda2 and that's it now we can just clear up the console and type the setup and it's scanning for our partition and here we can just do if you want to set up the key map and you can also set up we have already choose our key map that is the default one us and let's just go begin with the add swipe and here as you can see it has already detected our swipe partition so now let's uh, proceed with the continue it's asking us for bad blocks check and i'm not going to do this here because it gonna take a lot of time let's just continue with the no and let it uh, let it add the swipe partition to the file system table file now let's proceed with the ok and now we are prompt to choose our root installation partition and that is our root partition and let's proceed with the yes and let's perform a quick format that will be the btrfs and let's wait for a couple of seconds and let's add it to and it has also detected our efi partition as well and it's correct and just format it to the fat32 and let's add it to the file system table 
Now it's asking us to whether to install the Slackware Linux from CD, DVD or USB stick or if you want to install it from the hard drive you can also do that. So let's just proceed with the install Slackware from CD. Let's leave it as a default and that is the auto for scanning our CD and DVD drive. And let's wait for a couple of seconds. Now the most important part of the Slackware Linux installation has come for choosing out the software and the programs that you need on the Slackware Linux. So by default Slackware Linux comes with the KDE Plasma desktop environment. So I'm not going to make the, any kinds of changes and I'm just uh, I'm just going to make the small changes. I just don't want these games and I just don't want the XFC for desktop environment as well. And we are just going with the KDE uh, KDE one and let's see for the another one and I'm I don't I don't need the GNU Emacs here and let's see for the another programs okay now I think it's good now let's proceed with okay and let's uh, give the visibility to the tours and that is the recommended one for the beginners if you want the what kinds of packages are installed on your system just go with the tours and let's press on the okay and this is gonna take a lot of time almost about 20 to 30 minutes uh, to install the whole complete package on your system and you can also see that the packages are displayed on your system uh, displayed on your console so let's wait I will catch you up there when the installation is complete all right so now it's almost about to finish the installation so we are prompt to make a flash USB boot so I'm not going to make this and let's just skip this now it's time to install the bootloader. In most of the modern system, Grub bootloader is by default installed on your system. But in the Slackware, we are just given a Lilo as a bootloader. And I'm not going to install the Lilo because my system boots under the UEFI environment. So that's why I'm just going to install the e Lilo. So let's just uh, skip this OED. And let's install the e Lilo on the EFI system partition. Now let's press the enter. And let's install a boot menu entry as well. So let's verify the installation. Now it's asking us whether to load the GPM program that allows you to cut and paste the text on virtual console using a mouse. So I don't use the console at most of the time. So that's why I'm not going to load this at the boot time. So that would be the upload where. So and now it's time to configure the network. Uh, let's just press this and let's give the host name and that will be the slack by the way and let's give the random domain that will be, that will be the domain.com and i'm not going to select the vlan id here and let's keep the network manager as auto configure and uh, let's keep it default one and the basic network configuration has been Completed and let's select the startup and I'm not going to run the cron daemon as a startup process and I'm not uh, let's check and So let's keep it default and let's go for the another one and I don't want the SSS to be run on the system startup and let's press the enter and that is much so would it like to try out some custom screen fonts so I don't want to try that out and let's click let's set the hardware clock to UTC and that will be the just select your reason and let me just select my reason and that will be the ACR slash cut okay and so let's go with the uh, beam I am the beam lover here and let's keep my default Axinate RC window manager and that is just gonna be KDE Plasma and it has a lot of window manager here or the desktop environment let's just explore one by one of them and no root password detected let's just go ahead and set up the root password and that will be the default one and let's press the enter and now you may reboot your system so let's just go ahead and exit from the installation media. After you have completed the installation process, you will be prompted to reboot your computer. Once your computer has restarted, 
you will be presented with the Slackware login screen. Use the username and password you created during the installation process to log in and start using Slackware. That's it. You are now successfully installed the Slackware Linux on your computer. If you run into any issues or have any question, there is an active community of Slackware users who can provide support and assistance. Thank you for watching our video on installing a Slackware Linux. We hope it was helpful and that you are now enjoying your new Slackware system. So have a nice day.